Hi guys, Steph here, and what we've got is another gorgeous pen. What we've got is a, see, I was going to say a vintage. No, what we've got is an antique fountain pen. What we've got for you here is a Swan Maybe Todd 200. Now the 200, this particular model I'm dating from around about 1915 so as you can see over a hundred years old this is an antique fountain pen for a hundred year old pen it's absolutely gorgeous as you can see it comes in this black hard rubber this model is just simply a plain black hard rubber there's no chasing on it although saying that I believe these models they did come with some chasing, some of them came with overlays etc, so they, they, they came in different configurations but for a hundred year old pen, what a beauty. You can see this model here comes with a, a nickel clip, um, there's no markings on this clip, it's just quite simply a nickel ball clip. So apart from that there's no other markings, so you notice there's no levers etc because simply this is what we term as an eyedropper fountain pen which we'll show you in a moment let's first of all show you the the barrel imprint here the barrel imprint reads uh, swan and then next to that although it's worn it does actually say self filler um, underneath it has maybe Todd and Company made in England so again for this age of pen I would say that is a clear imprint what we've also got is, if we turn it round, um, again a little bit on the worn side, which you know is quite expected for this age of pen, but it does have, um, it says trademark, and then in the middle it would have had a Swan logo, and then underneath that um, it has a number 200. So I'm not sure if that is actually clear, clear on the uh, on the video. So that's how we can identify this pen as being the Swan Maybe Todd number 200. Incidentally the 200 is quite a sought after model. There were similar ones, I believe there was a, uh, a Swan Maybe Todd 1500. But these I believe are quite sought after. Um, as with most pens of this era, of this period, it comes with what we term as a slip cap which just simply um, pushes on and off. Let's show you the pen and the uh, cap together like so. And let's show you this section there. You can see it's got a long tapered section. And then to the top there, one thing you'll notice, what we've got is what we term as an over and under feed on this pen. You can't see the imprint because of the feed, uh, but the nib imprint reads, well, it says a Swan number one, 14 carat, um, as I say, maybe Todd and Company made in England nib. So it's a number one nib. There's a sideways view. And as I say again, it's got this over and under feed. Now, how do you fill these pens? Nice and simply, what you would do, you would actually unscrew the, the barrel like so. And there's the, there's the feed. You'll notice to these pens as well, you'll notice this little silver sort of twisted... Uh, wire just underneath the feed going into the section I believe that's to help to sort of agitate and also with regards to the the ink feeding into um, into the section but what you would do is if I show you this box here which I've had for quite a while and inside this box here is an original eyedropper you can see the sort of the rubber is actually solidified now but this is an original eyedropper and what you would have done in on that in the period of 1915 you would dip that in the ink uh, get some ink in the eyedropper and you would drop it into the barrel and fill the pen hence the name an eyedropper fountain pen so let's pop that to one side um, in this particular case I'm going to use modern, modern methods <laughs> a syringe so what we'll do let's uh, let's get some ink in in the syringe I don't think I need that much 
and I'm just going to syringe it into I think that will do is let's pop the rest in in the bottle there so we've uh, popped some ink or we've given life if you like to the pen let's put the section back on screw it back on the threads on these sections I've applied a little bit of silicone grease just to help with any leaking of any ink at the section there and obviously for a well for a hundred year old pen why not if it leaks a little bit then well I would say that's to be expected another thing about these pens they used to recommend that you keep them upright at all time and then when you actually store them the recommended that you would store them at an angle so as not to not to have any ink sort of um, if you like blob into the caps etc so there's certain instructions with these pens that you've got to sort of um, if you're not well if you like adhere to another thing that they say is to sort of warm warm the barrel up or you know the the air inside because the eyedropper pens did have a tendency to sort of if you like blob when you actually begin writing so it'll be interesting to see if it does blob let's see how it writes if it does write so here we go so what we have is a oh there we go we have a a swan um, as we said this particular one is a maybe Todd and company it's dated as early as the 1915 so it's a antique fountain pen this one's actually writing absolutely lovely does it have any flex the answer is yes it does and I'm not putting any pressure hardly on the nib it actually has a lovely flexy nib So there you can see on the downward stroke we're getting a lovely line but all in all <laughs> for a hundred year old pen absolutely superb oh I love it you know it actually put some of the modern pens to uh, to shame it writes absolutely gorgeous lovely writer a little bit of flexibility in the nib and for an eyedropper fountain pen absolutely superb so let's pop the cap back on which just simply pushes on and off so once again this is the last of the pens that came to me for a service and restoration um, I wish this was my pen but unfortunately it's not it'll be going back to you Simon Simon lovely lovely writer I'm sure you're going to enjoy that one I hope you've enjoyed looking at the pen as much as I enjoy showing them you people leave a comment below but for now I'm going to say bye-bye.